Hey, what's up, everyone? I want to talk about some of the uh, New Japan stuff from the uh, East Coast from uh, last spring. They actually um, did air the shows in Japan, and the IVP videos is releasing whatever aired in Japan. Uh, so you, you could definitely check it out if you wanted to check out, you know, Prince David and Loki or Davy versus Tanahashi, because um, you know they they were pretty uh, ma pretty big matches, and I was excited for them. Uh, but uh, Jersey All Pro Wrestling co-promoted the show with New Japan, and uh, so I'm not so sure if they're ever going to release the official shows on DVD. And even if they are, I mean, who really cares? I mean, I have to say I was really let let down by uh, this whole weekend, you know, from some of the stuff that I've seen. It was just kind of disappointing. Uh, but they, they did, uh, you know, they did air the shows though in Japan. They aired the Intercontinental Title Tournament on one show, and then the other show they they took all the matches, all the big time matches, just, just kind of piled them up together. Um, and fit him into a two-hour show, uh, which was okay. I, I, I enjoyed the uh, what what they did air in Japan, but uh, you know some of the tag matches from uh, Rahway, New Jersey, were clipped, so I wasn't happy about that. But uh, it made sense, though. I mean, I, I didn't see how they were going to jam all this into two hours. So, but thankfully, they didn't clip the uh, Prince Devitt and Loki match from uh, Basketball City. I actually went to the show. You know, this is the only match announced for the Basketball City show, so I was really excited about this. And it came off a, a lot better live, I would say. It seemed like there were some audio issues with it, uh, so they didn't really capture the experience uh, well, in my opinion. Um, it, you know, th there's, there's been some debate on here about, you know, if a match needs to be long to be epic. And um, I, I wouldn't say that, but uh, this is the kind of match, I don't know, it seemed like they only went about 10 minutes to, in total, to tell you the truth. And just that's just not enough time for me. I, I didn't believe the finish. It, it left you wanting more. Um, but the, you know the crowd loved it though. I, I Loki and Debit, they were at top on the top of their games. I mean, they, they gave you great near falls. They gave you some great spots. They gave you uh, pretty good drama for. I mean, they packed in a lot of action for ten minutes. But I don't know. I, I just expected a little bit more. You know, the expectations for wrestling fans are just really high now. But you know, if you want to see Prince Debit and Loki, uh, you could buy it here from uh, IVP Videos for a dollar fifty. You could actually download the DVD and uh, burn it yourself now, which is pretty cool because you don't have to worry about the shipping and all that stuff. So, yeah, uh, so so the next match uh, that they aired on the show was uh, Juice and Thunder Liger versus Kenny Omega from Philadelphia. This is where uh, Liger dropped the Jersey All-Pro uh, light heavyweight title to Omega. Uh, it was okay. You know, you, watching this match, you know, um, you could kind of get the feeling that Liger's really slowing down even more so than last year. Um, so, I mean, it's pretty much about a three-star match. That's all I can say. Just nothing memorable. Uh, next up, we had Tanahashi. The, was this for the belt? No, I, I guess it wasn't for the belt. You know, Hiroshi Tanahashi versus Davey Richards. I guess this was a non-title match. Uh, extremely disappointing. I, I really thought this could have been something special. It's just another case of, uh, you know, Davey in a New Japan match just not getting the kind of time and, you know, it, it, the, the finish just wasn't believable to me. I just, I don't know. It's just just really really um I don't know. I think New Japan really dropped the ball with this. This should have been something really really special. Uh, it 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 just wasn't. I think Tanahashi won the match with the frog splash, and uh, the, the crowd didn't buy the finish, and uh, didn't get a lot of time either. You know, it, it's like your typical Davy match in, J in New Japan. I, I've never been really impressed with you know how they how they've uh, used them over there so far, and then the main event. Um, from Philadelphia, I guess, because Rhino's an ECW guy, and they were working in the old school ECW arena. They put him against Tony Mac uh, Togi Maccabi in a hardcore match. It, it was okay. It's pretty much all I could say it was. So yeah, overall, this is disappointing. Um, it's pretty cheap though, only a dollar fifty. Uh, if you guys do want to see whatever aired in Japan, uh, definitely check it out. Uh, I'm not so sure if these shows are ever going to be released on DVD. So if you want to. Uh, let me know what you thought about it, though. It'd be interesting to see what some of you guys thought about Devin and Loki, because I thought that was uh, a pretty big match at the time. So, Hey, what's up, everyone? This is actually going to be a uh, just a quick rundown of uh, Dragon Gate's Kobe Festival. I know this is kind of late. haven't got to talk about it yet, but I did want to combine it with something. And uh, the show is awesome. It, it's definitely um, probably the best Japanese wrestling show of the year. And uh, I'll probably say probably the probably behind Money in the Bank, the show of the year. Uh, the last four matches, you know, you can watch them over and over again. So it definitely has some great replay value here. I would say last year's uh, double main event was probably uh, better than than this. You know, you had BB Hope and Shingo. You had Masada Yoshino and Yamato last year. That awesome double main event. But I think th this is definitely the better show. The last four matches were all spectacular, all you know, great. 
So uh, let's just get right into it. You know, you opened the uh, Triangle Gate match. You had Yamato, Masato, Yoshino, and Gamma uh, of the uh, Junction 3 stable taking on the Rookie Doi, Yasushi Kanda, and Saira Khan. Uh, so you got, you know, the two factions going at it. Uh, you just had, you know, just great action here. I, I thought I thought Gamma, out of anyone, really, you know, stepped up and showed a lot here. You know, you don't hear a lot about him because he doesn't come to the States very often. But he showed a lot of personality out there. And um, I love the finish. But, you know, the thing about this match which really stood out was, you know, you had uh, all these different guys from both factions interfering and jumping into the match. But it was done in such a way where it didn't take away from it. It was just, it didn't take up too much time. It was just, you know, they... They did this really cool spot. You just have to see it. And uh, it just came off really good. And just a lot of fun. I'll give it about four and a quarter. Just just really just sweet Dragon Gate action here. Just really, really satisfying. Uh, next up, you know, Akira Tozawa versus Shingo. I was, this, this is the match I think most people were looking forward to. Um, you know, the thing about this, you know, Tozawa is a heel now. And, um, you know, so obviously he wasn't going to try to work the crowd the same way he would in PWG. I, I just love... Um, you know, it's a shame he's not coming back to the States because I thought Tozawa really established a connection with uh, the American audience. You know, uh, he just really did a beautiful job of, uh, you know, getting the crowd into his matches. So here in Japan, he's not really, you could definitely notice the difference now, especially now that he's a heel. Um, so, but this match with Shingo, I mean, it was just really cool and it told a great story with, um, and I have to say Tozawa, and I agree with uh, Excalibur, he said Tozawa really... His cardio is just unparalleled. I mean, the guy never gets tired. And I definitely agree with that. He's like, he's just like a, it's like the Energizer Bunny. The guy just won't stop, no matter what you do to him. And uh, it was this match was pretty cool because Shingo tried to. Obviously, he's a much bigger guy. Uh, you know, you pretty much pretty much got the two most talented guys on the roster just going at it here. Shingo was just trying to overpower him with his, you know, hard hitting offense. But, you know, Tozawa wouldn't let up. He'd like, he like he acted like it didn't affect him at all. And um, you know, Tozawa was just such a it was such a bull in this match. It, it just seemed like some of the whenever Tozawa was on the offensive end, particularly with the uh, some of the Germans he was doing, you know, Tozawa wraps the guy up and tries to German him really slowly. And Shingo's facial expressions, it just looked like he was kind of scared out there. It was just, you know, great match. And, uh, you know, Shingo actually put Tozawa over. So it looks like Dragon Gate's really going to do a lot with Tozawa over the next couple months. So, uh, so, so let me know. Yeah, and on a side note, let me know what's going on in Dragon Gate. I haven't heard anything. Haven't heard any reviews of any, uh, you know, shows that came out lately. So um, if anyone has anything to recommend, j just let me know. But, yeah, I thought Tozawa versus Shingo, definitely great replay value. It's the kind of match you can watch over and over again. I must have watched this match maybe about four or five times already because it, uh, it was definitely that good. So next up, we had uh, Open the Twin Gate Unified Title Match. You had Dragon, Ga Dragon Kid and Pac taking on Sima and Ricochet. So I'm not so sure if I saw it, but I, I guess uh, Dragon Kid was actually kicked out of the uh, Blood Warriors. So yeah, I, I know Nightmare um, Baller, he talked about how uh, this match made you know more sense than your typical Dragon Gate USA match because you know both both got, both got teams have beef with each other, so it made sense. But you know, I think the thing with Dragon Gate USA, they're, they're trying to you know sell DVDs and they're trying to run a lot of shows now um, with all these triple shots. It's just... they. I guess they kind of they're kind of under pressure to kind of present you know fresh you know tag team matchups. Maybe they might seem kind of random. I would agree with that. But you know this match, you know if you look just looking for pure action, you know great action in a you know a tag team wrestling match in you know great spots and just great athleticism and you know holy shit type of things. You know this is the match for you. I mean you know say what you want about Ricochet, but the guy is a hell of an athlete. This is the best showing from Ricochet. You know, since he's since he's you know caught fire, you know this is the best I've seen him look. Uh, Pop looked great. You know, you got the whole you know heat of few with Dragon Kid and Sema going on. So, like I said, you know, if you're just looking for pure you know action and you know pure enjoyment, this is probably the best tag match of the year. Just just excellent, excellent stuff. Uh, next up, we have the Open the Dream Gate title match. You have Masaki Mochizuki, the champion, taking on BB Hope. Yeah, so I guess Mochizuki won the belt from. Uh, Masato Yoshino didn't see the match, didn't see how that happened. Uh, you know, it's they had to follow a lot, I would say. You know, I wouldn't say Mochizuki and BB Hulk are, uh, you know, the, the two most talented guys on the roster. I, I really wouldn't say that. But um, I have to say, though, considering, you know, everything we just saw, these guys went out there and still put on an awesome main event. It just, um, you know, with the uh, with these Open the Dream Gate title matches, they play the Japanese national anthem before the match starts. So I think that adds a lot of importance to the actual match. Um, you know, start off kind of slow, which wasn't bad. It just, you know, 
I thought they did a great job. You know, they countered all the finishers. It's whenever you know BB Hope was going for a high spot, it was countered. Whenever you saw potential for action to happen, everything was countered. So, and uh, you know, they worked the crowd into the match, and it was just it pretty much delivered. I would say, you know, just really, really good stuff. Very, very stiff. You know, you got Mochizuki in there. He's probably the stiffest kicker, and uh, probably the two stiffest guys as far as you know throwing uh, kicks go in, in Dragon Gate. Uh, you know, BB Hulk's actually a heel now, so I think that he's better suited as a heel, definitely. You know, I was kind of, I never really bought into the, you know, the pretty boy BB Hulk babyface character, so I don't know. It, it was okay. I, I wouldn't say this was, this was amazing. I, I'll probably barely give it four stars, so I'm not just that high on this match as some, uh, some other people were, but uh, I'll give them credit, though, because they, you know, th this crowd saw such great, you know, action before this match, and these guys still went out there and, and managed to pull off, you know, a really, really, you know, awesome, you know, a pretty awesome main event. So, uh, so that's pretty much it. Let me let me know what you guys thought of the show. And uh, like I said, if anyone has any Dragon Gate recommend recommendations, uh, let me know.